the mother city gives us the ability to express, create, move and make. With her help, we've become a city filled with boundless talent, raw humanity and wild individuality. The time for the extraordinary is now. No longer will the brilliant be bound. Episode 4, Champa Surfcraft. My name is Henry Muller. I am 25 years old and I make surfboards. First day of second year at college, they gave us a color wheel to color in. And I remember being like, color wheel, second year of college, like is this what we're paying for? So I left the class, like walked out of the class, took the color wheel to my parents and I was like, this is what they gave us on the first day of second year. If we pull out in the next three days, we can get 100% deposit. Um, I then asked for that like deposit for the year as like a business startup. Kind of bought the tools that I needed to make surfboards a bit more professionally. And then, yeah, paid them off within like four months. I mean, it never really stopped. We're very, I don't like the word niche, but we're very specific in terms of not only the boards we make, but like the mindset of the guys that work here. We're all interested in the history of surfing. We're all very interested in the history of surfboard design. Um, so we're all kind of aligned in our, our thought patterns and where we want to go. The local market hasn't really caught on to what we're doing just yet. We're almost a, a year or two ahead of the local market because we're very influenced by the American market and the Australian surfboard market, which in general South Africa is about three, four years behind on everything. Um, so our whole aesthetic is very much driven by Australia and USA. And slowly our local market is picking up on it, but it's going to take a bit of time. But the plan is that we'll be ahead of the curve. We are trying to change the shaper-surfer relationship in the country. A lot of people, you know, order a board over the phone and pick it up, whereas we want it to be a bit more of a personal experience. Um, they come in, we order a board, draw the shape, cut out the shape, shape the board to a finished product. From there it goes into glassing where it's laminated on both sides, kind of sandwiched in between fiberglass. Um, at that stage is when the color goes in. Then after that it gets what's called a hot coat or a filler coat or a sanding coat, so it's just straight clear resin. Then it gets rough sanded, basically shaped back down to what that original foam shape was. Then after that, it gets what we call a glass coat. So another layer of straight resin, which once again fills out all the bumps and imperfections. And then that layer is what gets polished up or final sanded. I had a patch last year where I just didn't want to look at a surfboard. I was not interested in making surfboards and you know managing how you actually feel about what you're doing is probably the biggest thing. So make sure you're true to it if you want to do it. Make sure you really love it <laughs> because if you find yourself in a position that it's successful but you don't love it, eventually it's going to collapse unfortunately. Live and let live, and let come what come can. So I'm the youngest of six kids, and sometimes my older sister says to me, you know, like, how do you have it all figured out? And you know, how come your business is doing so well? And like, what's the trick? To be honest, I have no clue. I've been full on 
faking it till you make it situation. I don't really think there is a formula. I think if you just put your head down and you do it, it should organically kind of start to grow. The main thing is just consistency with everything. I kind of try and live my life consistently in all aspects, but with business it's just come in, make a product and I mean from the get-go it was always let the, let the product do the talking, let the boards do the talking.